There are two subjects I want to focus on very briefly, again, because I think that they're super important. Welcome to Vibrational Excellence, a lecture with myself, Donna Mitchell Moniak, through Spirit Fire Meditation Retreat Center. It's a joy to be with you. I have interest in this subject, and I have it because it has helped me a lot in my life. Vibrational excellence is found in many ways, and among them, are the vibrational sciences that have been part of my life and maybe part of yours. My first-hand experience reports to me the value of vibration, the vibrational sciences, and report to me that there is truth there. In addition to that, I was born with some intuitional capacity, and therefore intuition as well is valued by me, is used by me, and validates itself over and over again. So as I reflected on upcoming summer months and fall months and what kind of course I might want to offer, I thought to myself, well, right now, vibrational medicine is helping me a lot. My meditation practice, which is to heighten and to sustain a refined vibration, is supporting me a lot. And my friends and the colleagues that I have all sustain and maintain within themselves a certain layering of vibration that is heart-centered, mindful, thoughtful, and kind. And so all of that reported to me vibration. And I thought, well, vibrational excellence then. Let's focus on that for a number of months. And so that's what's generating this talk tonight. There is long-standing history about the vibrational sciences. So the long-standing quality of the information on vibrational excellence has certainly been around for tens of thousands of years, literally. It is included in the spiritual and healing sciences of all traditions, in meditation method, again, of all traditions and all throughout time. And over and over again, the observations of nature have provided for us not only medicines, but have provided for us understandings about our core, to be, for instance, mountain-like or uh, strong like a tree or to flow like a river and such as this. So these are all actually vibrational qualities that we have observed outside of us in nature. Some of you might have experienced some of these, acupuncture, plant medicine, energy healing, and meditational spiritual practice. I know that I have. I've raised my children on homemade plant tinctures. Acupuncture and plant medicine have brought my physical body back from a terrible brink that MS brought me to. And I know several people who do energy healing. And of course, I'm a meditation teacher and also teach spiritual practice. So all of these are very robust within my life. And each of these is a complex science. Acupuncture, plant medicine, energy healing, meditation, and any spiritual practice. All of them have the complexity of vibration and of method. And the method is only going to work for a person if it is in resonance with that person, that person's energy fields, demeanor, and belief system. So if there is resonance with the vibration of the science or the method, then it will work for that person, and the result will be tremendous efficacy. So at the root of all of these, whether we are talking about, again, spiritual practice, and there is any number of them around the world, plant medicine, think of all the different plants in the world that are used for healing, that are even used for food. Well, that's a form of medicine. We are what we eat. Then at the essence of it all is vibrational resonance. Therefore, to understand not only that as a fact, but then to understand furthermore for ourselves that 
It is the resonance and the vibration that you and I individually and uniquely are that is going to make such and such work well for you and this or that not work well for you. This is one of the things that I want to take up in the various four-week online classes that will follow through the summer and the fall. At essence, my friends, all is vibration. Meditators throughout the history of meditation have said that because they have firsthand experienced that. And if you are a meditator, you have had that experience. You've also had the experience of layering a vibration because you're a meditator. And if we're not a meditator, maybe we're in one of the hard sciences. Well, now the hard sciences have come to that, and it's a full stop sentence as far as science is concerned. All is vibration. It is unquestioned. And then lastly, from a spiritual point of view, all foundational spiritual practices and religious philosophies state the same thing. They might give it a name and say a name as to what that primary or primordial vibration is. But at essence, they're all saying all is vibration. I want to invite you to say out loud to yourself the next few slides and take it in as you read it. If we understand one of these facts, and they are facts, then that person will increase the ease of their life and the ability to accomplish one's goals. If one understands two of those facts, then one will increase one's capacity for intuition and subtle forms of knowing. And if we were to live according to all three of those facts, then we would be living an illumined and an aware life in harmony with all of existence. Nikola Tesla said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So we have three things we're going to keep in mind already. And those are the three things that we just read out to ourselves. At essence, if we can keep in mind that all is vibration, everything without exception is vibration. Science says that, quantum physics says that, the spiritual disciplines say that, and the direct experience of meditation say that. If we are an energetic healer, we know that. So we're going to keep that somewhere in the back of our minds as we proceed. Then we add to this what this great engineer and scientific mind this great inventor so far ahead of his time, what he came to, that everything that reveals to us how everything else works, 
comes down to energy, frequency, and vibration. So let's define those three terms from a metaphysical point of view, but that is not in deference or contrary to science. It simply is from a more metaphysical point of view because that's where I want to lead us all to the consideration of these four classes. So what is vibration? Well, vibration, if all is vibration, then vibration is the first sound. Vibration is also called the primordial sound. Certain spiritual uh, scriptures and spiritual disciplines, they give it words like Aum, Om, or Ah. There are other words that can be used. I'm sure that there are some from the tribes of Africa, the tribes of North America, the tribes of uh, Australia, etc. We could have put the Tao here. The Tao is considered the first sound. It is also called within script, the Christian scripture, of course, the word. And in the beginning was the word. So vibration is what we are talking about. Akasha is a Sanskrit word that translates that upon which it is written or it is written. And that is speaking about the fabric of space, the fabric of dimensionality, which is vibration itself. And from the ancient Egyptian and the uh, Buddhist tantras, we have Thoth or Mahashri, who actually are more than likely the same being, just different words conveying the name of this being. But if you read these types of texts, it's clear that they're talking about the same beingness, if you will. And he is said to have created all of this world and all of the universe, depending on the level at which you want to interpret in the scripture, by being the very song, by being the very sacred word or speech of awareness, and that awareness is at the same time manifestation. So these, these are profound considerations, and yet at the same time, we are again reminded that all is vibration. So underneath all the metaphysics is a simple scientific fact that has been quantified. Vibration, then, is the first cause of manifestation. But at the same time, vibration exists and expresses regardless of if there is materialization, regardless of a manifest form. And we have here, for instance, within this image created by a colleague, that all these layers of vibration exist all the time, whether or not we as a human being know about them or even think that they are there. If all we focus upon is our materialized form, our dense body, then we might not be aware of these vibrations, yet they are the first cause of this dense physical self. They are the, the reason for our incarnated form. And more about that as we get to the actual courses themselves. And therefore, you and I... You are the vibration of being alive. Consider that for a moment. The vibration of being alive. You are also the vibration of being aware. And the vibration of being able to express your awareness, your aliveness, as well as to experience. So there's a vibration to experience and a vibrational capacity for experience itself, and we will call that resonance. Going back to Tesla's quote, frequency. What is frequency? Well, from a straight-up science point of view, it is literally how frequent or rapidly, a vibration oscillates. So the word is literal. 
Slow frequencies demonstrate as slow vibrations, and they are experienced by all of us as low tones of sound uh, and various vibrations of density, various denser forms. So if we look at the, the wonderful graph down here and we see that the visible spectrum of light is that, look at the top bar, not the bottom one yet, the top bar shows where all the rainbow is, but the full black bar is the spectrum of wavelengths of electromagnetism. So we see where the rainbow is, that's the visible spectrum. That's the limit of the visible spectrum that we see, unless you have some clairvoyance. If you have some clairvoyance, then you're seeing in the ultraviolet spectrum as well. If you're also perceiving, let's say, David forms, or you are able to perceive elves or fairies or that kind of, again, elemental form of being, then you are perceiving within the infrared, just beyond on, the, on that side, because those are densified spirits, if you will. And again, more on that within the courses. So fast frequencies, then, they will demonstrate as higher vibrations. And for everyone, that is experienced as either high tones of sound, for instance, if you are a meditator or you're in a rarefied, sacred place, you might have a, a, a humming or ringing in your ear, a certain high-pitched sound within your ear. That's not tinnitus. That's you being slightly clairaudient whether or not you know that you are. So you are experiencing a high vibration. And equally so, these high frequencies, when we are in a state of clarity, we're in a state of joy, we're in a state of meditation, these kinds of things, it then gives this various list, including an intuitional capacity, or the capacity to, for instance, offer energy healing in some way. And what is energy? Because Tesla had three things. Energy, from a metaphysical point of view, is a quality and an intention. So the, it's the same one thing, but it has a quality, and the quality is the intention, if you will. The intention probably is first. And that moves through the field of ambient vibration, because all is vibration. It's the very fabric and constitution of everything, of cosmos. And as it moves through this energy, it will move through either in a slow, a medium, or a fast rate. Therefore, it has frequency. And this causes energy moving through vibration. So those, again, who know the word akasha, this is when energy, intention, moves across akasha. Then that makes certain things happen. And what it causes to happen is one of these three things, and it's not anything else. But each of these three things, density or contraction, we would expand out to use additional synonyms to expand the, these three capacities or three results out to all the possible extensions of them with, within cosmos. So that's a lot, and that would be a lot to consider. But absolutely worth considering. So as a result of that, when you or I look in the mirror and see ourselves, of course, when we observe a tree, when we have a dream, if we happen to be offered the moment to be patient or kind to another human being, it is imperative now for us to realize that any of these experiences are our experience of layers of vibration. And within those layers of vibration, we are also experiencing any number of frequencies in the moment. If we're looking at a tree, the tree has a dense quality, but anybody who's felt a tree, hugged a tree, stood by a tree, or seen the aura of a tree, well, you know its vibration is actually pretty high. 
And furthermore, as we hold all these factors so far that I'm building together with you, we are to understand that intuition and the development of intuition is only possible as we learn to recognize vibration. It is vibration that we are tracking with intuition. It is vibration that is uh, resonating within us when we have, let's say, a hunch about something or we pick up on somebody's past lives or something like that. It's the resonance that we're having because we're holding our vibration adequately high enough and refined enough to be able to receive the impression of whatever it might be that is impressing us. To further build upon this overall subject of vibration so that we have a sense of what kind of excellence are we talking about uh, for the rest of these courses? At essence, we want to acknowledge that there are two forms of vibrational revolution occurring right now within humanity. One is predicated upon the sciences and a scientific explorations that have been happening for the last number of decades and have really gathered steam, that is to say, and now have you know, showed us some very important things that are changing paradigms. And secondly, there is energetic, cosmological, solar energetics, etc., that we are experiencing, whether or not we know that they are causing changes for us, they are, and their effect is real. So the first has, that is to say the scientific, it has the potential to change our dimensional existence. It has the potential to change how we are in our dimensional existence, physical plane existence, how, how we think about physical dimensionality, how we live in space-time, what we consider to be real or unreal, etc. So again, as some of the sciences are experiencing categorical paradigm shifts, well, all of that's going to trickle into inventions, into new sciences that are taught, into the reinvention and correction of current paradigms that are no longer valid. And so similarly so, the second, which is the energetic, again, cosmological, the sun is, and all its, um, all its perturbations that it's having right now, it's very, very active, then that is having an effect on us as beings who live on the third rock from the sun. So again, all these things are going to be the focus of these four classes, and um, more on that, you know, will be at spiritfire.com for the website if you want some details. So let's just look very briefly at a couple of the revolutions in science that are affecting us. Um, here's a short list of some of the ones that I have interest in. But one of the things that is on here that when we look at them like cognitive distinctions, as we have more children incarnating who are, for instance, autistic or hypersensitive and therefore labeled with whatever label that they are, equally so as we have children who are incarnating who have fundamentally different physiological energetics We'll learn about those when we talk about the seven rays in one of the four-week classes. Then these children, for instance, are being labeled as uh, attention deficit disorder children. It's not that case at all. In many cases, they first off, they need more nature. They need to be out in nature. They need to play like my generation played outside. And they need that because that's a biological mechanism that we've had for, of course, hundreds of thousands of years and not longer. So to be divorced from nature is to divorce ourselves from our own nature. And therefore, you know, these children who are used to having their feet on the ground and playing in the dirt and looking up to the sky and having the freedom of imagination, when they're penned in a house, it's just going to create problems. 
But in addition to that, autism and um, many children just have very kinetic and kinesthetic physical bodies. They are kinetic as in there's a lot of energy in them. They need to move. They need to be directed in movement. And then again, they're, they're told to sit down. They're told to be quiet. They're given a, a video game or something like that, which isn't going to dissipate their kinetic energy. And equally so, many children are being born now who are very kinesthetic. They are sensitive to the vibrations all around them. They are sensitive to the, the vibrations in the home, the vibrations that were from the past in their area. They're sensitive to the vibrations of the adults around them and to their thought patterns, etc. So this idea of cognitive distinctions is actually very important to understand. And again, these are just many of the subjects that we'll take up in these courses from the point of view of vibration and from the point of view of if we are parents, if we work with children, if we work with adults, then how can we use some of these subject matters to understand our vibrational excellence and bring forward more vibrational excellence in the world? There are two subjects I want to focus on very briefly, again, because I think that they're super important. Um, and one of my driving passions is this idea of exploring nature and trying to find hidden data within nature. And it seems to me that there's this latent potential everywhere, um, all around us. Everything gives out some kind of data, whether it's sound or smell or vibration. And through my work, I've been trying to find ways to harness and unveil this. And so this basically led me to a subject called cymatics. Now, cymatics is the process of visualizing sound by basically vibrating a medium such as sand or water, as you can see there. So if we have a quick look at the history of cymatics, beginning with the observations of resonance by da Vinci, Galileo, the English scientist Robert Hooke, and then Ernest Kladney, and he created an experiment using a metal plate, covering it with sand, and then bowing it um, to create the Kladney patterns that you see here on the right. Moving on from this, the next person to explore this field was a gentleman called Hans Jenny in the 1970s, and he actually coined the term cymatics. And then bringing us into the present day is a fellow collaborator of mine and cymatics expert, uh, John Stuart Reed, and he's kindly recreated for us the Cladney experiment. What we can see here is um, a metal sheet, this time connected to a sound driver and being fed by a frequency generator. And as the frequencies increase, so do the complexities of the patterns that appear on the plate, as you can see for your own eyes. So, what excites me about cymatics? Well, for me, cymatics is an almost magical tool. Um, it's like a, a looking glass into a hidden world. And through the numerous ways that we can apply cymatics, we can actually start to unveil the substance of things not seen. So the beauty of what this young man was just saying is that vibration effects matter. Vibration effects matter. And what we just saw is the fact of it. Not just that it's true, but that it's factual. And then furthermore, Dr. Emoto of Japan in the 90s he started to do work on the vibrational quality of sound, like cymatics, but specifically he focused more on words. And he also focused on the ambient thing all around us and of which our bodies are mostly comprised, and that is water. Dr. Emoto would have a wide variety of people do a variety of experiments. And some of them were to put water in a container and then say a single word over it, but repeatedly. And maybe the word was a negative word or to do it with music. And so you see here what was the result. What you see in front of you are crystals 
So you would then take out of, let's say, a, uh, a quarter cup or a beaker of water that had, for instance, Amazing Grace played near it or by it, then the experiment would be to take a single drop with a dropper out, put it on a glass plate, quick freeze it, like super quick freeze it, and then with a microscope, the droplet would be allowed to melt. And as it would begin to melt, it would show, and I might be having it backward that it would be the freeze part first, but simply these crystalline forms like a, like a uh, snowflake would display. And so we see, interestingly, you see here clearly the distinction with heavy metal music. Heavy metal music, of course, has a low vibration. It has quite a significant bass beat and things like that. So this is clearly displaying to us that vibration affects matter. In this case, the matter being water. He did other experiments with um, things like rice. What would happen would be the, the rice, if you said negative statement to it over a month, like every day you just came and you said, I hate you to a closed glass jar of rice. Then, as one would anticipate, of course, first off, the rice would mold and go through that kind of a process. But also, it would also get really, um, like, poisoned looking and just very weird looking. And there are, again, pictures on the website for Emoto. And equally so, though, if you said, I love you, to this another jar of rice and left it also for a month and said the same thing to the rice, then that rice wouldn't even mold. It would actually turn often a beautiful golden color. So it's interesting to see, again, the effects of vibration and vibrational excellence. Here are some words. We see again that negativity effects water significantly and we are comprised mostly of water almost 80 percent of water that means our children are uh, our pets are the plants in our home are our ocean is our planet is The vibrational revolution that is happening that is, if you will, macrocosmic is energetic in nature. And it has to do with emissions. And some of this is actually quite profound to consider because it is, to, it is profound to consider our placement within cosmos. And... The electric universe model, which again, anyone can do some research on, is helping fuel some of the information um, about the, the currents that are in cosmos and that are affecting our Earth. But it is not primarily that that I'm focused upon. It is something that our, our sun is in, it happens to be in a cycle and a long cycle where it is focused in a particular way towards the galactic center as it moves through the galaxy and as the galaxy turns and all of that kind of thing is happening, then the sun just sometimes has that orientation and sometimes has it less so. Um, and we happen to be in a cycle, and again, it's a long cycle where that is more so. That is affecting the sun. And so the sun is having far more um, spurts of radiations, uh, it's um, cosmic emissions, uh, solar emissions, I'm sorry, are happening with more frequency and uh, they are larger in class. And so that affects the earth. The earth's magnetic fields, of course, receives all that. 
the Earth's magnetic field, you know, a lot of it's deflected, but a lot of it's not. And that has to do with the ozone layer that is dec being depleted and decreasing on our planet. Add to the, all of this that the Earth's magnetic field itself is has been fluctuating for the last 30 years. And it has been creating various anomalies, and some of them are quite large over some of the oceans, that again has been is tracked by science and the, a simple web search will show you some excellent um, imagery of that. Then we add that humanity, humanity is troubled. And by the same token, there's an awful lot of human beings who are meditating on peace and light and goodness, who are putting all efforts forward to change the world, to transform it into a, a, a place of goodness and kindness. So you have this both sides of that at play, and those psychic currents are energies. They have vibration to be sure, just as when someone is in a good mood or a bad mood in our family or at our workplace, the vibrations of that are felt by anyone. We add to that, again, great cosmic cycles such as the change of an age that is a zodiacal factor that has to do with the precession of the sun and the precession of the equinox on a vast scale, the yuga, as is called by the, um, the Sanskrit and the Vedic calendar, we're heading into the, we are in the Dwapara Yuga coming out of the Kali. And lastly, ray cycles. And ray cycles, again, will be handled within one of the classes. So these are huge things. And as we just look for a moment at this slide that gives us a sense of the scale, first look at the size of the Earth compared to the size of the Sun. As the Sun injects these very high power, these are these have gamma rays and cosmic rays and x-rays and huge bursts of electromagnetism and it's full spectrum and they affect the magnetosphere of the earth. Is that positive or negative? We shouldn't even think about it in positive or negative, but we do want to understand that these things are real and that they are affecting people's sleep patterns, they are affecting people's nervous systems, they are affecting people's uh, uh, um, endocrine system and immune systems. So they are affecting how we communicate, they are affecting every aspect of our human life. So these things are very real because they are all about energy, frequency, and vibration. A person who seeks to harmonize his own qualities cooperates with the cosmos. In creating one's own spiritual image, each person perfects universal harmony. So there are these cosmological factors going on, and they want to provide newness. You know, when, when we think about the sun, when we think about galactic energies, these are about expansion. These are about new paradigms. And then, of course, when we acknowledge that there are exactly that going on within the scientific field, within the field of human relations as well, there are new paradigms. We're getting tired of war. We're getting tired of people being sick and diseased. Being tired of some people having a lot and a lot of people having nothing. So these kinds of things are paradigm shifts that are trying to happen that all have to do with vibration. So then as we look out to the world, we see that vibration has been acknowledged in a wide variety of ways and is used in a wide variety of ways by all spiritual traditions. And you probably do most of this yourself in some way. 
We have the use of drums, ritual song, mantra, chant, singing bowls, and the list could go on and on. All of these are used by you and certainly by me and by probably lots of people we know to bring about higher vibrations and to attune within ourselves to the higher vibrations that are always around us and within us. In a similar way, meditation training and intuitional skills. So the training in both meditation and intuitional skills, they require that we attune ourselves to higher and more subtle energies. Again, energies that are always present. So what are these energies and vibrations? And how can one develop these subtle energy skills? How can one develop intuition? And is there a value or a need of doing so? It is exactly these questions that I have the intention to take up and to offer certainly method and technique and practical application for within these oncom upcoming courses. At essence, all these courses will have simple and yet pervasive intentions, and it is simply to raise our awareness about vibration uh, and all the ways that it expresses, and then furthermore, to help each of us raise our own. And why? Because humanity needs it. Every person who raises their vibration or is aware of the vibrational quality that somebody else is bringing to them in the moment is aware of the sensitivity that they have and why they are a sensitive being. These things affect us, and humanity is one collective consciousness. So if you or I or anybody else we know understands more about our own vibration understands how to enhance it, understands why to use it properly, understands that our food is vibration, our words are vibration, our thoughts are vibration, everything we eat and experience and experience in any way, subtly or dense, is vibration. To understand that affects ourselves and it affects humanity. That affects the world. That affects the collective future. That affects our personal future. If I can abide more in contentment, the vibration, the high vibration of contentment and peace, instead of in the vibration of anger or anxiety, that my future is going to be a better future. My now is going to be a better now as well. Each of the courses will focus on a particular aspect of vibrational being and methods will be offered, as I said, that will enhance and expand one's vibration, the, the student's vibration. And I should say I've been teaching these kinds of things for about 30 years. So I've witnessed over and over and over again over that length of time, including still right now in the meditation practice that I teach that, in fact, method works. Um, so I think that I can bring a skill to this and bring a um, 30 years of understanding off of that to you through these courses. These courses will build upon one another, so you are encouraged, if you have interest in them, to do the whole cycle, you know, in the way of almost looking at a semester at college or something like that, because these will build upon one another. And they're uh, short, just four, four sessions each. So as we close this up, I want to encourage you, you know, if you work with people, no matter what age, and no matter what professional capacity that is, consider these courses. I think you will find that they will enhance your work and help you understand more about your charges, if you will, whoever you are interacting with, whoever you have to supervise or 
instruct or support in some way, I think that you will find that you will be far enhanced in your skill set. And furthermore, if you yourself simply want to understand yourself more fully and access or learn to access more of the human skill of intuition, which the Master DK calls the science of impression, then again, I think that you would be well served by the courses. And equally so, I think many of us have forefront in our heart and our mind, you know, how can I more skillfully participate in the transformation of the world? Well, again, I think that those questions will be answered through method and application within these courses. So you can find the details at spiritfire.com. So I'll stop here for a second just to see if there's any further comments or questions. And Mary types, does humanity affect the sun vibrationally or are we insignificant? Um, we are not insignificant. Um, do we affect the sun? I don't know the answer to that, Mary. I think that, you know, we are interconnected vibrationally with all existence. And certainly from a metaphysical point of view, there would be many and many have down through history that say that what we do on this little blue planet affects vast schemes of life out in cosmos. So that's all I can offer as an answer. So thank you everyone for coming tonight. It's been a joy to be with you and um, I hope that you will consider signing up for these courses. I think they'll be fun, but I think as well, I think that there'll be a lot to explore and a lot to um, learn together. So thank you all. Blessings. <laughs>